Administrator, another meme requires your attention. <laughs> Arya, I'm deep in thought here, okay? It's probably just some troll face dum dum trying to break the laws of physics again. It's about crabs. Ooh, crabs, and how seemingly everything is returning to them? Now that's something that we can explore. Dear viewer, why are animals returning to crab? Will humans ever trade in our crushing depression for an armored carapace? Let's dig our way into this science. A pinch, pinch. Now entering the facility. First of all, surprise, surprise, these memes need a little clarification. The phenomenon here is not all animals from the tree of life generally scuttling towards crabness. No, it's already crab-like organisms becoming more crab-like. And it's not as though biologists are going to bed one night, waking up the next day, and seeing a bunch of new organisms everywhere crabbing it up in crab town. No, we're talking about a process that takes millions, if not billions, of years. However, with all that being said, we are discovering more and more examples of the independent evolution of crabness. And I know it would be more interesting and more memeable if it seemed like all life was proceeding towards a final form, and that form is crab. But what's happening with crabs has happened with all life on Earth since life began, and that process is called convergent evolution. Like real branches, the branches on the tree of life move and sway in the winds of time. For example, two organisms that share a common ancestor may get less similar over time as they evolve divergently, stay as different as they always have been in parallel evolution, or develop similar traits even when a common ancestor didn't have it in so-called convergent evolution. While creatures independently converging on the same traits, genetics, or even body plan sounds bizarre, it shouldn't really be surprising to you if you follow the logic of evolution. All animals on Earth share the same DNA, and so under the same environmental pressures and with enough time, evolution is bound to come up with the same solutions with all this trial and error. One of my favorite examples of convergent evolution has to be the independent evolution of echolocation in both bats and dolphins. These two mammals couldn't live more differently, and yet, when pressured by the environment to find small, fast-moving prey in vast, dark environments, both mammals tended towards throwing sound waves off of stuff. Some other fun examples are both primates like you and koalas developing fingerprints that are nearly indistinguishable from each other. Actually, in Australia, they had a, a case where they had to check if it was a koala's finger. Uh, also, octopuses and vertebrates developing the same eyes, flying fish and birds evolving nearly identical wings. Now, the independent evolution of crabness even has its own name, carcinization. But what a true crab actually is, is harder to define. Dear viewer, it's a crab test. Which of these are biologically true crabs? Kind of sounds like a trick question, right? King crab, Dungeness crab, both have crab in the name, pinch, 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 they crabs, Kyle. But the king crab is actually not a true crab. They carcinicized, trademark, they carcinicized from the humble hermit crab, which themselves are not true crabs. All the biology here gets kind of complicated, but so far biologists have uncovered the independent evolution of crabitude from porcelain, hairy stone, coconut, king, and the Pedagurus rex crabs. So, how do you make a crab in this way? What makes crabitude so successful? Aria, prepare the human trials. They're, they'll, they'll work this time. Allow me a quick aside about convergence. Think of your opposable thumb, the digit on your hand that allows you to make an opposing force on your hand. It's widely cited as one of the most important steps in human evolution. It allows for the so-called precision grip. Think of how many things in your life would be harder without the precision grip. Think of trying to do the dishes or performing open heart surgery. The opposable thumb in biology textbooks is also usually presented as unique to primates like you, but with convergence, 
that's not the case. Both the giant panda and the red panda both independently evolved a false thumb that acts as an opposable thumb. Biologists think that giant pandas use their false thumb for manipulating bamboo and falling out of trees like big dumb idiots, and red pandas use their false thumbs to brachiate, to move through the trees. And what's really incredible about this is that they independently evolved opposable thumbs independently of each other because they're not that closely related. It's convergence within convergence. Isn't that amazing? I mean, just think of how hard it would be for me to even film this just if I didn't have thumbs. I like holding the camera so, oh, it's Please kill me. I don't want to cram it anymore. There's so much sand in my mouth. Ah! Whoa, 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 whoa. Ignore all that. As, as we've been explaining, carcinization is actually less bizarre than it sounds. It's already crab-like things becoming more crab-like. Specifically, it's defined by biologists as a three-step process. So say we have something like a lobster. To become crab, this lobster's carapace has to flatten and shorten such that it becomes more symmetrical. And then its sternum widens out over biological time. And finally, its tail gets tucked underneath its torso, or its pleon gets ventrally flexed if you want to be all nasty about it. Now, this crabness has some advantages. That's why we see so many crabs. So what is so good about crab? Scientists can only speculate as to why being crab is so Gucci, but there are a few possibilities. Being flatter and shorter may let crabs hide in better nooks and crannies. Having a tail tucked underneath an armored carapace may make a smaller overall target for predators. And maybe walking sideways is just much faster than how non-crabs walk. Or maybe it's a combination of all crab attributes that make them so successful. After all, it's hard to argue with results. For example, there are only a few species of lobster, but over 6,000 species of crab scuttling around and pinching everything, and soon, so too will my Kevins. An army of, wait, I mean, ig ignore that again. There are obvious advantages to being a crab or else so many creatures wouldn't be one. So finally, will everything eventually return to crab? Will you become a pinchy boy? Well, this is kind of like asking if humans will ever evolve any advantageous trait, like wings or night vision or the ability to reconcile the fact that social media is gonna destroy society, but this isn't how evolution actually works. It can only modify and naturally select what is already there. It would be incredibly biologically expensive to completely change a body plan like yours, especially after billions and billions of years of evolution's trial and error getting it right. It's much easier for a lobster to become a crab than for you to become one. And consider this, there's also decarcinization. For example, the frog crab, which you see behind me, is becoming less of a crab over time. So all this considered, no, humans probably won't return to crab. That would take a radical scientific intervention in gene editing that I'm definitely not at the forefront of. Forget what I said. Okay, until next time, bye-bye. Oh no. Now exiting the facility. Thank you so much to the Very Nerdy staff at the facility for their direct and substantial support in the creation of this video. If you want to join the facility, if you want to drape on a silky white lab coat, you want videos early, you want behind the scenes bloopers videos, you want to join the official Discord that you can't get into otherwise, you want private monthly live streams with yours truly, <gasps> not like that. You can go to patreon.com slash Kyle Hill and join the facility today. And hey, if you support us just enough, you get your name on Aria here each and every week. As you can see, there's literally hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of you. I have no idea how I'm gonna pass that. Now, I say you probably won't return to crab, but what could happen in the future is more of a return to monkey. Human evolution is still going on. We see examples of it 
all the time, from the evolution of different eye colors, to lactose intolerance, to uh, people who have a more diving culture, swimming under the water for their food, evolving bigger spleens for more red blood cells. Human evolution is happening, so if we move to another planet, or we were geographically isolated from each other for a long enough period of time, you could evolve towards more monkeyness. But probably not Crip Crip. Thanks for watching! Beep, beep.